1 John 5 to 1 to 6 KJV Whosoever believed that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. overcome the world, but he that believed that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. He Additional reason for his entrance into the world is to give you victory over all activities of the adversaries, challenges, and situations of life, which are boundless. We are all aware, once you belong to him, he takes over all your battles. you permanently victorious and a winner always. 1 John 5 18 21 KJV We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. I'm sure you have children and everything you will do to make sure your children are secured you will, I'm sure you will do within your means and power and everything to make sure they develop to be healthy children successful children in life you will do I'm sure you know that if you as a human being does that to your own blood children you can imagine the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Almighty. 
Hallelujah. The Almighty who controls the heavens and the earth, who controls the entire earth space. Hallelujah. Now I promise you I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hey, my friend, just go ahead and relax and go to And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. It is imperative that you abstain from sins and iniquity. Thank you. Thank you for the meeting of yesterday. Thank you for the meeting of last week. Thank you for the meeting of months before. Thank you for how you have sustained us since the beginning of the year. Father, we are grateful. Accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. We commit this meeting into your hand. Take over this meeting. Have your way over this meeting. Have your way in each, in each of our lives. And that at the end of the day, we would have been moved from the lower level we are now into another higher level in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. We soak this meeting in the blood of Jesus with the bar, with all extraneous spirits in this meeting. And we, we declare this meeting opened in the name of the Father. For the whole world, as in the above scriptures, lies under Amen. wickedness, Amen. which means Amen. the evil Amen. actors and agents Amen. are unrelenting in their agenda. Amen. Sin, which is simply disobedience to God's Amen. commandments, Amen. opens the door wide. He sends me in the morning, so he sends me in the afternoon. But if he changes his mind and says, no, I don't want you to speak on that topic in the afternoon. This is what I want you to speak on. Hey, who am I to say no? Whatever he tells me to do is what I do. So it's the same topic, which is celebration of liberty. Celebration of liberty, freedom. You know, somebody who has been hospitalized for months, and the doctor promises, oh, you'll be living tomorrow. You are okay now. Everything For the wicked ones to encroach perfect. into your life and space, and their activities a lot of times come in subtle ways and thereafter and violence, followed by killings and destruction, today, with its negative impacts felt speaking. all over. And it's healthy. You can walk. You can move. When he steps out of the hospital, you can imagine how joyful he will be. Somebody who has been hospitalized for months, who has not been able to go out of that hospital ward for months. How much more somebody who is also who has been imprisoned for years, maybe for months, in custody for weeks, and all of a sudden his time to be released has come. You know, and he's released. He's re he goes out of the institutional bars with chains, with iron bars, cage bars. And they opened the door, one door after John the eight thirty six K J V if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. As you celebrate this season of unlimited victories, remember you have been set free from the dominion of darkness and brought into his kingdom of marvelous light. He will laugh. I'm sure you have an idea what I'm talking about. How much more for instance if you have been if you have been in so much want, hunger, hunger, and somebody brings so much food, somebody goes to the mall, to the grocery store and buys bags upon bags upon bags upon bags of food for you and brings it to your house. Meanwhile, before that time, you have been malnourished, you have been hungry. Food in the house was virtually zero. You have been aching from, from hand to mouth, and you see bags of food. How will you feel? If somebody tells you you supposed to start crying, you, it's not an understatement. Now, that's exactly what Jesus Christ celebration, frenzy period we are in is all about. As you are indeed free, don't get yourself entangled again. Do have a wonderful celebration. EOD. The world we are in today is largely dominated by evildoers. There are, of course, there are a countable number of good people, no doubt about that. 
When I mean dominated, I don't mean they are in, they, they are, I don't mean they are in population. That's exactly no, not in population. In population, there are still much more millions of people more than the evil ones. I'm sure you know that even billions. But take one evil man to take a gun and go and shoot two or three people in a mall or in a shopping center or in a market or in the bank to go and rob. You know how that deadly news will resonate? Virtually all the good news will be suppressed. And that evil news of killing of three people or four people in those places I've mentioned becomes the dominant news. Even you will see this mainstream media Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. That's what I mean by it's largely dominated by evildoers. Just one in a million people takes such an action. It resonates across the landscape. So, when they, when, and their activities of the evildoers, they are all over the place. I was sharing with some people. I said, and I shared it on this platform too, two or three times. I said, it takes only an, a honest friend of yours, a honest friend of yours, whom you think oh, you are close to, who, is, who has gotten into drug habitation, to now say, oh, come, let, let's go to my friend's house and have a party. And it's a party of drugs, illicit, deadly drugs and you ignorantly just follow because he's your friend that's why you must be careful of association and you must warn your children about unholy association that person is already hooked on drugs he now invites you oh come let's go and you have never been in drugs and you get there ignorantly ignorantly and <laughs> permit me to say foolishly Forgive me if I use that strong word. And you get there and you see them smoking. Instead of you to quickly say, excuse me, I just want to ease myself and quickly disappear. You are there. They are smoking. Before you know it, they say, oh, just take a shot. Just take a little. Just take a little. That's how they do. Before you know it, you put your mouth there. You inhale it in. Oh God, that's the end of the matter. You are hooked. That first one you will take will put you on the wrong one to look for a second shot, a third one, a fourth one. By the time you run home, by the time you get home, you're already, of course, on another planet. The following day, uh, you begin to yearn for the same thing. You, be, you begin to wait for your friend to call you and say, oh, can we get some more of that bull, S-H-I-T. And the friend says, don't worry, I'm coming, I'll come and pick you, we go again. That's the end of the matter. The same thing with evil associations, occultic associations. Oh, don't worry, we will come and help you. We will come and, okay, you have that challenge. It's a court case, have you? Okay, it's a police case. Oh, it's the, the, the gang case. Okay, don't worry, we will come and help you. From helping you, you go into captivity. People go into captivity. Because people's Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And Jesus, God has seen all that before he said, oh, let me send my, send my son to go and deliver there. That's the essence of the celebration of the entrance of Jesus Christ into the world today. To set the captives free, to set them free from all forms of captivities and bondages. You see teenage teenage girls, ignorant teenage girls go with their friends. 
Even some of them are virgins. Before they know you know it, they've gone into illicit sexual activities with their peers and begin to have all kinds of immorality. Some of them do get pregnant in the process. Some of them, from there, their destinies are perverted and destroyed because of peer pressure and associations. All kinds of invitations into dark world activities take place across the globe. All kinds. And God was seeing all that. He now said, let me send my son to go and open the eyes of the blind, to go and set the captives free, because they have no knowledge of how to set themselves free. That's the reason why Jesus Christ came. In order to set the captives free. Hallelujah. Let me read the scripture for you to back up what I'm saying. Which is uh, the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 16 to 20, verse 16 to 20. Look at what he said. Look at exactly what God, after Jesus Christ had finished his assignment and handed over to his disciples, his disciples handed over other disciples, other disciples handed over the disciples, the other disciples handed to other disciples to how he came to people like me and others that are in existence today. It has been one handing over. Handing over. So we are still in the same lineage of the Jesus Christ we are talking about, who handed over to us. I remember several years ago, my late father who was also going into the prison to go and preach to prisoners. One of those days he went to go and preach in the prison, and uh, the prisoners had gathered together to listen to him. And uh, while he was preaching, somebody, one young boy just gave a dirty slap to an elderly man. In the midst of his preaching, one young boy gave a dirty slap to the, an elderly man. And the elderly man was astounded. He, was, he busted out crying right in the midst of the preaching. My father had to ask the young man, say, what's, what's wrong with you? Why did you do that? To an elderly man, the, you know what the guy said? He said, look at him. He's advising me. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do that. If he knew how to advise me, how come he found himself in prison? He should have advised himself not to get to prison in the first place. My father kept quiet. He kept quiet. He had no answer to this situation. Jesus Christ said, let me read it for you. Like I said, my father went to be, to be preaching in prison. I have also been going to prison to preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, this thing is a handover. Occultic fathers hand over their occultic positions to their children. Witches hand over their occultic powers to their children. The children of God also hand over their own, hallelujah, to their children, hallelujah. It's a passed down syndrome. It goes from one generation to the other. But it is for us to encroach into their dark recesses and space and activities to go and set them free. Just like I'm going to read to you in the scripture right now. Hallelujah. Verse 16 says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. The, the Jesus Christ now, they are speaking about Jesus. Jesus Christ came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Verse 17, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias, Esaias which was Elias. And when he had opened the book, he found the book where it was written, 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. Anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You know, I told you who the poor the Bible is referring to here yesterday. The poor is not necessarily the one without money or food or power. Not necessarily. They are, they are also poor, definitely, no doubt. But the poor here are those who are poor in the spirit. I told you, take 70%, 90% of the billionaires we have in the world today, they are poor people, as far as the Bible is concerned, in the spirit. They are financially rich. They have luxury houses, luxury cars, luxury this, luxury that. They have all the financial means, but they are poor. They have no knowledge of anything in the spirit, very little. In fact, most of them, if you go through the records very well, they are aligned with the dark kingdom, most of them. You can quote me, they are aligned with the dark kingdom. Anyway, so they are poor. The onus is on those who are rich in the spirit who they have handed over to over the years from the, the lineage of Jesus to his disciples to his disciples to the disciples to us and to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> to go there and rescue them from the dominion of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. To preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the Broken hearted, did you hear that? Those who are broken hearted, those who are in despair, those who are discouraged, those who are on suicidal missions, those who want to give up, those who want to don't even know how to go forge ahead anymore, they are confused, the broken hearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. Did you hear that again? and recovery of sight to the blind. Hallelujah. Recovery of sight to the blind. See, a lot of people are just, like I said in my post, they are like walking corpses. They are just moving around. They don't know they are left to the right. And you will be surprised that a lot of them are in power, positions of authority, but still they don't know they are left from the right. That's why you see haphazard things that are happening in, in positions of authority. Haphazard things. I don't want to use very other words. I'm just using that word. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To set at liberty them that are bruised. That's why he came. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 19 and verse 20 says, And he closed the book, and he, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. The people were yearning, were hungry for the word of wisdom, words of liberty. To set them free. I told you, you are driving on a, on a road. You get to a T junction. A T junction. Only one will lead you to the right, where will take you to your destination. The other two roads are no go area you'll be going the wrong way. How do you know which way to? Well, thank God today there is a Google map that will give you direction. Yes, very good. But the Google map does not work in the spirit, <laughs> in the spiritual. So the Google map we have today and forever, which has always been before the Google came into existence, the Google map direction we have always had has always been the word of god in the bible 
Hallelujah. That's what gives you direction to when you get to the T junction of spiritual life, whether to turn right or turn left or keep going forward. It is the word of God. Hallelujah. Remember in the book of Job, chapter 7, verse 14, he said, even the, the stump that has been in the ground that has not budded, at the scent of water, what will happen to the stump? It will begin to bud. You begin to see green leaves come out of the, of the stump in the ground. The green leaves will begin to come. At the what? At the scent of water. Life comes back. I'm sure you know, look at your area. I don't know where you are living, but anywhere you are in the world, anywhere you are, is the same all over the world. In the dry season, you don't hear the frogs coming out. I'm sure you don't hear their sound in the dry season, whether in the day or night, you don't hear their sound. But let it come to rainy season anywhere in the world. And you see some ponds around your house, some ponds. Immediately the rainy season starts and water begins to come out. You see the frogs also beginning to come out. Where have they been? They have been in the ground. But at the scent of water, at the entrance of water, at the coming out of water, the frogs also come out. And what does water represent in the spiritual? It's the word of God. Hallelujah. You know, when you are even speaking, you remember Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, when God breathed the breath of life into man, before that breath of life, man was just lying down on the floor, lifeless, until God breathed the breath of life into him, Genesis 2, 7. And what did the Bible say after he breathed the breath of life into him? And that man became a living soul. Hallelujah. That breath of life is vaporized. I'm sure you know that. When you are speaking, you will see vapor coming out of your mouth, especially in cold regions. When there is snow, when the cold, you see vapor coming out of mouth. Vapor also is a representative of water. So when you are speaking the word, you are vaporizing the situation in your life. You are putting vapor into it. You are putting life into it. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. <laughs> to put life back into the dead situations of your life. Hallelujah. Now, if he came to put life back into death situation and you are celebrating his coming, his birth now. Does that call for unholy celebrations? Does that call for un un unlimited alcoholic activities? Does that call for drug-related activities because you say, oh, you are celebrating Jesus yes, and you are going into drugs, into alcohol, into all forms of immorality. He doesn't call for that. He didn't come for that. He didn't come for that. <laughs> That's why he said that he has come to set the captives free from bondages, from captivity, from mental disorderliness, from illnesses, sicknesses, and diseases. from unholy associations, from dysfunctional family operations. Addendum kindly press the middle paragraph twice. It will stop for you to read after reading press. Once it will continue to the next page and repeat same till you finish reading. Thanks. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. I know a particular country in the Western world, and it happens in most parts of the world anyway, where you have single mothers. 90% of those who are in jail in those countries are from single mothers, single parents. 90% of those young people there, they are from single parents. You know how hard it is for a single mother to train a child? 
She has to go to work. Maybe take the child to...